So, afternoon, um, <laughs> I just had an experience. All right, first of all, remember how I needed to make the appointment <clears throat> for my, um, like, well, wellness check or whatever? Well, I did that, and I just got done right now with that. Um, I have to say that the main doctor, Lydia, is really nice. Like, I feel like she has a lot of energy, and she was really concerned about just you as a person, making sure that you were, like, mentally in a good place, and, um, you know, they were amazed of some of my answers for things, because there's literally nothing wrong with me, knock on wood, um, except for my kidney disease. So, uh, in some sense, I feel awkward coming in for checkups or annual exams because I'm like, there's no issues, <laughs> but I guess it's necessary so that in case there is an issue, they can figure it out. Right. But, um, then I went to get mammogram because she's like, well, since you haven't had one in a long time, it's good that you have one. And apparently there's certain things that you do like every year and certain things you do every five years. And that's changed a lot because, um, when I was like, I want to say younger, but it's because like it, it was when I had my kids were little that it was like you had to go every year to get checked for things. And now it's like, oh, no, every five years. Unless I guess there's an issue or something. Um, <clears throat> but what was wild is <laughs> the girl in the mammogram office was so callousy and borderline rude, aggressive. And... I don't have any problems getting a mammogram, and um, for those who don't know, mammogram is when they check your breasts to make sure that there's no cancers or problems going on with them, because um, I do have a couple of younger audience members who may not know what a mammogram is, <laughs> and that's fine. Eventually, you'll have to go get one, too. Um, and it doesn't hurt. It's just kind of uncomfortable. It's kind of weird because you're showing somebody your boob. But other than that, does it really matter? No. <laughs> Especially after having kids. Like, it's just decency or privacy is out the door. So, whatever. Um, oh, and it was so funny because <laughs> for my wellness check, they, the intaking nurse was like, um, do you mind if the intern comes in and asks you some question and gets some paperwork done for the doctor? Or would you just refer prefer just the doctor and I was like I I watch Grey's Anatomy I know what a teaching hospital is I was like I'm down I don't care and I don't care that was fine and she was so sweet and she got to learn a couple of different things um but then going back to the mammogram lady she was a very definite a personality very definite um fill in the blanks, every line needs to be, every T crossed, every line filled out, everything to the last detail, and I didn't have a lot of it because I'm adopted, and so I don't know whether <clears throat> people in my family have had cancer. Um, I don't think that Peruvians in general have a high number of cancer genes. I don't know. I mean, you know as much as I do, right? Um... <laughs> So she was a bit frustrated with that. And it's like, I, I don't need to dive into my personal life if I'm not openly wanting to tell you it. And that was frustrating too, because it's like, you know, I'm not here to waste your time. And by the way, I'm paying you to be here. When you really look at it in the medical field, it's like, yeah. I'm paying you because it's my money or my insurance, which I am a part of, to pay you. So just do your job and be nice about it. Anyways, we started talking about 
because <clears throat> I said, oh, well, I'm on dialysis. And so um, when I was getting screened for transplant, they wanted to make sure that I don't have, you know, of course, any cancers. And they noticed that I had a couple of things in my lungs. Um, but come to find out, that was actually just uh, valley fever, which everybody in Tucson has, because that's who we are, Tucson Valley Fever member. So it's not a big deal, um, but they wanted to check, and I think that's why I got a mammogram, just to double check that I was clear. Um, and that's what I told her, and then she started telling me about how her friend's son did not have valley fever, which was weird, and... Um, they started medicating him anyways. Yeah. Because they're like, well, everybody eventually gets it anyway. So what's, what difference does it make? And his mom was really upset. And I was like, I'm really upset with that because who are they to just give? Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, crazy, 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 crazy. And she's in the medical field, you know, and she's like, agreed with me like, yeah, everybody has valley fever or has some of the things inside the lungs, you know, whatever. It's just how we live here. It's just something you get. And 90% of people don't know they have it unless something happens where you have to get your lungs checked or so forth. Um, you know, then you just live your life and, and it doesn't even really do anything to you. And so... But to medicate somebody who didn't even have it just made me flash back to COVID and all that hoopla. But also, um, it makes me almost more determined to not get transplanted <laughs> because I told her, I said, well, you know, that's the reason that I, I don't have um, I, I really a desire to get transplanted is because right now I am literally medicine free. I have nothing that I'm taking extra. Um, other than <clears throat> probably like vitamin D, um, some vitamins, some over-the-counter maybe, like my genomycin cream, I have to have that. It has a little bit of, uh, of a bacterial killing thing with it. So, you know, I mean, but I'm not taking medications for anything and when I get transplant that totally changes things and depends on how my body deals with the transplant like some people can go beautifully it's fine other people have struggles and then you have to take medications to help with those struggles and it's like if I'm not having struggles I don't want anything so I don't know that's just wild to me um, but I, I do have to say after that conversation, then she like eased up and she's like, well, what kind of dialysis do you do? And I told her, I said, I'm on PD dialysis. I do it at home. Um, it gives me the flexibility to be able to live life fully and still be able to, you know, take care of myself. And, um, you know, so she really chilled out after that. And then when I was in the other room, <laughs> the, uh, main wellness doctor was like, Oh, my friend's on dialysis and she does everything. And I, she's like, you know, she stays active. She participates in life. She's constantly a part of different things. And I said, you know, I really think that attitude has a lot to do with your success with dialysis. And, and that's probably going to be a really big, I don't want it to be like a slap in the face. I don't mean that disrespectfully at all because everybody struggles in different ways. But at the same time, your mindset has to be set where you can find a positives in this life. And if you don't, your body listens to that. That's like your inner voice, your inner spark. And if your inner spark isn't producing joy or happiness or hope or contentment, then, you know, you see it all the time. People just kind of disappear and it's so sad and it's and it doesn't have to be that way that's the thing it's like you have a choice you can definitely help yourself figure out different things to do whether it's like a you know blessings notebook you write in every day whether it's um, picking a word to focus on for an entire week or a month um, some people pick a bible verse that they focus on for the entire year um 
you know, I think when I first started dialysis, I feel like my Bible verse was, um, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I think that's Timothy. And um, just knowing, like, it's all going to be good. You know, however it is, it's still going to be good. And then the second year I know was contentment because it was like, okay, now that I've got the flow, I'm in this, I know what I'm doing. Um, I had to focus in on being content that, yes, I'm at home. Yes, I'd rather be at the club. Oons, 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 oons. But uh, sometimes that's just not what happens with your body. You have to stay home and rest. <laughs> so, um, contentment was really a big lesson on my second year. And then my third year, I don't know. You know, I'm pretty happy with most everything. Um, maybe it's more of an education thing. I, I don't know. Which, by the way, I'm just telling you how my life is on kidney disease with kidney disease. I'm not here to be like, here's what Mayo Clinic says. I mean, maybe sometimes, but <laughs> for the most part, I'm not here to like educate you on how you do your dialysis because you and your doctor have to figure that out. I'm here to say I'm your friend and encourager and you can do it. Life is not over. And hopefully I'm sharing, sharing with you that life is still good. Regardless, whether you have dialysis or not, whether you have another kid, a disease or not, um, whatever your struggles are in life, we still have a choice to make it the best there is. And when you're feeling down and discouraged, then I hope that my videos will bring light to that. And so that's the purpose of what I'm doing. So anyways, I'm going to let you go because I need to go on to the next thing for the day. And then I get to drain. I get to drain in about an hour. So better get it done. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.